everybody, it's Tatiana and today I'm going to try and do some quick reviews so I can get them in one video. To do that, I'm going to skip over the synopsis of the book. I'm going to put the links to their Goodreads pages in the description box below and you can go and read the synopsis yourself if you would like to do so. Today I am going to do three quick reviews and these are reviews for the books that I read during the Battle Books Readathon. Starting with The Scarlet Curse by Christine Feehan. As far as I'm aware, this is her only standalone novel. I went looking to see if she had some other ones and I, everything that I looked for was part of a series. This is titled Scarletti Book One, but there are no other Scarletti stories until you get to the Carpathian story where a descendant of the characters from this book is one of the mates for a Carpathian. So, uh, this, what I liked about this book, number one, is that it is based in a foreign country and it's in like way way back when <laughs> it is in horse and buggy time period there is no modern transportation if you need to go somewhere you better have a horse to get there or be used to walking uh, so this is also during a time period where girls are married off or come of age to be married uh, at an early age. The one thing that I did struggle with in this book was that fact and not being able to tell if the female character was 16 or 18. Either way, the person <laughs> that, uh, and there are a couple of men who would be suitors for her who are attempting to get her hand in marriage and they are all at least seven years her senior. They are in their 20s or older so that was one thing that I had to get around I had to get my wrap my head around but of course that was something that commonly happened back in that time period so getting beyond that one of the things that I did like about this book is that even though the character the main character who was Nicoletta I was about to call her her descendants thing even though Nicoletta was young and there were many things that she was inexperienced about she had a lot of naivete around things, some things in dealing with relationships and dealing with the other sex. As a naive as she was, she was not written as stupid. And I think <laughs> sometimes authors have, or maybe it's just the way that I read books, where you have characters who are supposed to be naive and you can understand their naivete. I mean, if you're young, you're going to be naive and ignorant about some things. But there's a difference between being ignorant and being dumb. And sometimes I will read books that are about these young girls and they are thrust into adult situations and, I mean, common sense would put off some red flags or something, so I would think. And it, I end up, as I'm reading the book, saying, you're just a dumb little bitch. But that was not how I felt with reading this book. The things that she was naive about, you know, she understood that she was naive and she went about attempting to get an understanding. And I can respect that. The main male character in the story is Don Giovanni. And he is, he and his two brothers are like the rulers of the area where they live and where Nicoletta and her family and her people live is on their land and they are basically seen as gracious givers who permit them to live on their land and protect them and <clears throat> keep them safe from invaders. Uh, and their main invading country is Spain. The, the side characters in this story were, some of them were hilarious. You had uh, Nicoletta's guardian who was Maria Pia and she was just like the, and I had to, and it kept, it actually kept me rooted in the time period that it was in because she's a devout Catholic and I mean anything that happened that was beyond or over what she felt should have been done in their religion of Catholicism. She was throwing holy water and crossing herself and saying prayers, 
all over the place. And I and that I know it wasn't supposed to be comical, but that was comical for me because I know some people who are very much like that. Not necessarily Catholic, but who are very much like that. And so that ring, um, not only did it ring true, but it was just a little bit of comedy for me. You also have Giovanni's brothers who are uh, a very interesting characters in the story. And then you have the two little girls who uh, come under Nicoletta's wing as the story progresses. And I just really enjoyed this book. I enjoyed all of the characters. I enjoyed the, tw the plot twist in the story. And I think that it was for, I mean, I haven't, I've said in other videos that I haven't read any of her other series. I've just read the Carpathian Hunter series, and so I really wish she had more standalone novels because the Carpathian Hunter series is really the only series that I'm interested in reading by her, but I did enjoy the standalone novel, and it still had the supernatural element in, in it. It was just reduced uh, because these are supposed to be ordinary people. Next, I read Lover Man by Geneva Holiday, and this book was not what I expected it to be. I thought that as I started reading it, I thought that it was going to be this like overly sexualized romance novel, and that's not what it is at all. You have three characters, and they are linked by the friendship that two of them have with one girl and a dude. And the way that it all comes together was very entertaining. I mean, when the when the plot twist hits, it's like, ooh, what's next? What's next? What's next? I really, really enjoyed this 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 novel. I don't know if I'm going to read any of the novels that came before this. I did say in my wrap up that this is like the fifth book or fourth book. It's the fifth book in a series about these same characters. I don't know if I'm going to go back and read those books. I am going to check to see if the series extends beyond this Loverman novel. I haven't done that yet. But the story itself is just, and the synopsis really does not give you any hint whatsoever as to what the plot twist is and how things come, how things will end up developing. The one character who I really liked in this story and I didn't want to like her is not even a main character in the story and she is Shanelity Miller and she's like, I guess, Zane for the characters in this book because she is an author who has these very graphic sexual novels that these women have flocked to and has given them sexual empowerment and the way she turns up in the story and then comes to find out where she is, who she is, what her connection is to the male interest in the book as well as the other two girls, two of the girls in the story, it just all came together really well. I wasn't expecting it to be so good, but again, this is Bernice McFadden's pseudonym, so I really shouldn't have been surprised that it was more than what I thought it was going to be because she has a very good way of writing novels that when you read the synopsis or you start reading them you think they're going to be simple and they have some uh, complex characters in them that are very good or very enjoyable to read about. Lastly I read That Summer by Sarah Dessen and this all circles around a girl named Haven. I really enjoyed this. I said after reading the books from my last library hall that I was going to let go the YA novels, but this was a very quick read, and I really did enjoy it because, and Haven's not the only character, her sister, uh, whose name I'm spacing on right now, as well as her mom. One of the things that I really enjoyed about Sarah Dessen's writing is the descriptions. Like, I really in, like books where you can see everything in your mind. And Sarah Dessen described a lot of the things, particularly Haven's mother's yard. The entire yard is a flower garden. And they're described, it's described so simply. It's not all of these, you know, it's not three or four paragraphs of descriptions. It's very simply described. However, it has a recurring role in the story so as you're going along you get more bits and pieces of what the yard actually looks like until you're left with what the big picture really is so when you have 
Haven walking up the, you know, walking up the steps or sitting on the porch or you, just every, all of the descriptions that went into the novel were not overbearing. It, it didn't take her forever to get, to get it out. The way that uh, her sister's ex-boyfriend car, car sounds and how even if she's not seeing him as he's coming down the road, if he's coming down the road behind her, she knows that it's him because she remembers what the car sounds like. And you can hear it in your head. And I really did enjoy that. And the novel basically is about change and how change affects everybody, not just Haven, the main character, but all of the other characters in the story. Oh my goodness. Haven's dad's hair. I would love to see. I, I wonder if Sarah Dustin has a picture of who she envisioned when, as she was writing out Haven's father, who she envisioned him to be, because that is one of the most hilarious descriptions to me as he continue, as he recurs in the book. It's like each time he is mentioned in the book or she or Haven sees him, he's got more hair. And so I was just like, how is this coming about? Is it a wig? Is he getting extensions? Is he just letting his hair grow? But he comes back from vacation and he's, you know, just as tall as he ever was and he's tanned and he's got more hair. <laughs> that was funny for me because I keep picturing in my head this man struggling to be something or somebody that he isn't for this life that he's allowing himself to live. So, but yeah, it's all about change and through that and coming to understand changes and the effect of changes, Haven has this great uh, development and mental growth during the novel. Those are the reviews for the three books that I read during the Battle Book Sweetathon. I really hope that this was fast. Uh, if it wasn't, I'm sorry. I just didn't want to do a separate review for each of these books, considering I haven't gotten Cane River up yet at the time when I'm re when I'm recording this, and I was supposed to put that up during the Battle Book Sweetathon, but I kind of strayed away from YouTube while doing that because I didn't want anything to distract me. I just wanted to read. So. That is all that I have for today. I hope you all have a good week, weekend, whenever you're seeing this video. Peace out.